We have uh, conventional wisdom on counterinsurgency right now, which is counterinsurgency as state building, the development of healthy, participatory, well-governed states. It's an ideal. The ideal involves building the civil arms of the state to serve popular interests, uh, to gain the broad allegiance of the populace, including instituting broad reforms that affect the lives of the people of the state in fundamental ways. And it involves limiting the use of military force in order to prevent the alienation of civilians by causing unintended casualties. And all of those things are powerfully appealing to us as goals, and they make sense normatively in terms of what we want and what we like and what we think states should do for their citizens. But, as I said, this model has never actually been put into effect. And that's important because the United States is shaping a great deal of its foreign policy around this model of counterinsurgency. In Afghanistan particularly right now, but also in some other weaker states where jihadi violence or the uh, support for jihadi violence has been a problem, Yemen, Somalia. This is an interesting problem and an increasingly difficult one because there's a number of different perspectives on this that don't necessarily jive. Uh, there is an argument that the provision of any aid in a conflicted state is by definition going to benefit the insurgency in some way. If there are more resources, there's going to be more resources accessible to the challenger. And there is an argument that providing more resources also means more fighting because there's a bigger pie to fight over. And then in terms of conflicting roles, for the military it's difficult because if they feel like they need to protect aid organizations, NGOs, and so on, that's one more thing they have to accomplish and they already don't have the resources to do what they want to do. From the NGO perspective, there's a concern that if they're seen as allied with the military, that will taint them in the eyes of the populace, in the eyes of publics outside the area of operations as well, and make it more difficult to do what they want to do. And they also have the problem of trying to deliver aid or development, whether at the micro or macro level, in a conflict state. That's really hard. It's been fantastic. Being around smart people who do what I do all the time has been remarkably productive for me. It's uh, the differences in training with my colleagues, the differences in theoretical approaches and methodological approaches, learning about those things, how, how other people approach their work. It's, it's been amazingly fruitful.